Oh my god, you scared me. You can't just click on a video like that. You gotta announce your presence somehow. Say something next time. God, I'm just sitting here. Jeez. Happy end of October, everybody. Also known as All Hallows Eve. Also known as Halloween coming up. The time where we uh, dress up in costumes. And I know all of you nerds are probably gonna run some spooky Halloween one-shot where all your friends dress up and you make it really scary. And that sounds really fun, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. No, I went on Twitter and asked everybody what their D&D horror story was. Also, you know, like a TTRPG session that has gone very, very wrong. Um, so I'm crit crab today. Uh, but before we get started, guys, uh, it being the week of Halloween, that means it's Grim Halloween. You guys ever heard of Grim Hollow? Uh, probably one of the best supplements that you could use for some sort of spooky horror game of any kind. If you don't just want to run a one shot, even though, you know, Grim Hollow's got all of those pre-written adventures that are really, really cool. There's also a monster grimoire that has like a bajillion monsters in it. The Player's Guide, which has some content that I wrote myself, like the uh, Parasite Warlock or the Bulwark Fighter. Whole thing's normally like 150 bucks. It's on sale for 99 bucks. Qu uh, quite a deal, I would have to say. Thanks so much, Ghostfire Gaming. You can check them out with the link down below. How many different ways can I say link down below? I'm starting to sound more and more epic every time I say it. Guys, it's a sponsor. I've got to make money. <laughs> Okay, everybody who put replies at the end of this was cool with it, hopefully, because I put that in there, so. Pretty sure I've been the horror story to the group that taught me how to play D&D. I could not, for the life of me, figure out what character I wanted to play, and asked for respects and retcons multiple times. Props to them, they stuck with me and we still play every Sunday. That's not a horror story! That's totally fine, especially if you're a new player. I, if, I have a new player at my table and they're like, I don't think I like playing cleric. I don't think this is what I wanted to do. Well, um, then what did you want to do? Did you have an idea for your character? Yeah, I just, I don't want anybody to like make fun of me. Like, I don't know. I, I, I have an idea for a character that I really want to play and I just, dude, it's okay. We're all, we're playing make-believe game. You know, just, just tell me what you want to do and maybe we could try to make it work. <sighs> okay. Have you seen JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? So, for real, I actually really love players like that. Um, if they've got an idea and they want to pull it off and they just don't really know what to do and they're like, can I change this? I don't like this anymore. That's fine. If you've been playing the game for a while and keep doing that, who cares so long as your DM is cool with it. But, you know, don't complain about it. That's my thing. Just don't complain. Don't be like, man, my ability never works. Just talk to your DM or something. I don't know. This is not that bad of a thing to do. Fallen monk, why are you cryptid crab? We're all freaking crit crab. In a local game store, had a guy hovering behind the only girl players, my wife and a friend who was 15 at the time. When asked what he was doing, he pretended to walk away and then came back. I pulled, wait, he wasn't playing? He was just, so you guys were playing and he was just, he was just there, just, oh. I pulled up a chair next to me and told him he could watch the game here he walked out of the store. Yikes. The dude was breathing deeply the entire time and the store owners just watched it happen and didn't do anything about it. Yeah, that was our last time there. Come on, man, come on. If you're a local game store, you need to keep a, keep a close eye on your players. That sucks that that happened to you, Fallen Monk. But um, what was that guy trying to accomplish? <laughs> I thought he was a player. I thought he was like hovering or like he was hanging out at the game store, but the fact that you were just like, hey man, why don't you come sit over here if you wanna watch the game? And then he was just like, is insane. Don't be creepy guys, that's weird. That's gross. Our party all failed a save against being charmed from a barred BBEG. We were saved by an NPC contact who was invested in our party's safety. Also my rogue caught on fire and kept going down after minor bumps of healing, wild. Maybe I just don't have the context, but that doesn't sound that bad to me. Um, our party all failed to save from being charmed against a bard BBG. Like you didn't even get to roll or you, or it was the dice. Because if it, because in my mind, it's like we rolled and failed, but maybe you're trying to say that the bard just did it. And the DM was like, you're charmed too bad. He's just you, too bad. You, he's your friend now. This is the game. We were saved by an NPC contact who was invested in our party's safety. Okay, so what I'm getting at is that like you were forcibly charmed and then deus ex machina saved by a, by a DMPC. 
That sucks. Also, my rogue caught on fire and kept going down after minor bumps of healing. Well, you know, sometimes you catch on fire. <laughs> this one wasn't terrible, but here goes something. One time about a year ago, I was going to run a game for a friend and some of their friends who wanted to get into the game. I wrote up a vampire murder mystery one shot in which they were invited to a party and the host was killed. However, the trouble started before the game even began. One of the players was incredibly into it and excited and we worked together to make a character which made sense in the setting and we communicated really well. And the other two players, however, did not do this. They decided to make characters themselves having zero pre-game experience. I was constantly asking them if they needed help or anything explained, but they refused any help I offered. Come game day, they show up with a monk with threes in all stats and a bard with tens across the board and zero spells learned. I ask them why they did this and they tell me they were just messing around. On game day, at the exact time, we were supposed to start playing. So after that is sorted out and roughly an hour of playtime is gone, we start. I assume you made new characters or like you balance them out that's so stupid and dumb all goes smoothly or about how i expected it to go at this point the player who is in character and into the game our fighter rp'd at every turn and enjoyed the combat near the end of the session the bard and the monk however did not do this come to the wait you're only three players and two out of the three are just being dickwads come to the end of what was supposed to be the one shot but we have to split it up due to the time we lost we try to organize a date to play again but the bard always has a great excuse to why they can't come play the next session Scheduling conflicts go on for about a month before I give up on the game. However, a happy ending does come out of this as the fighters player made their way into a group that I DM for and had a great time playing with them. Funniest thing is that the monk who asked me to run the game and I didn't know that the fighter beforehand. TLDR, two bed players making running a one shot very difficult. This is, it just feels like a PSA. Like, that just sucks. Like, I've never encountered a player like that before, but I can't even imagine, like, trying to run this game and the two people just show up just to sabotage it or just to be goofy for no reason. Like, just zero respect for what you've planned and all that sucks, but props to that fighter. Guys, if you're gonna play in a D&D &D game, you know, there's people who put a lot of time and work and effort into the game that is for your fun. It's don't do this. So, so rude. Having too much social anxiety to tell new players no to can I invite my friend to play and ending up <laughs> and ending up with an eight player group for descent into Avernus. I feel this. It's like you tell one friend and then they excitedly tell the other friends and then they're like, that would be fun. And then they're like, can I play? And you're just like, yeah, sure. And those were the early days with the nine, 10 player parties, which were just awful junkyard D&D. &D. We didn't even know what was going on. We were just rolling dice and killing each other. <laughs> I don't know what was happening. What that ends up sucking for is the people who were gonna be in the game originally and were expecting a small party. And then they show up and there's like a million people and they're like, oh, I like planned for stuff with my character. And now all of that's gonna get talked over. Uh. Watching a streamed actual play, not naming names, but started noticing that every female character the male D DMRP'd was overtly sexually promiscuous, not one or two, literally all of them. Each time the DM had this mischievous smirk, not one male NPC acted similarly, I noped out. That's, yeah, ooh. If, I swear to God, if I was sitting at that table, dude, it, it, it would be on site. It'd be like, why is this like the fifth female character that is like overtly sexualized? Hmm? And they'd be like, oh, it's not. And then I'd like, I pull out the facts. Like I'd be, I'd have the board behind me and I'd be like, you're wrong. Look at this, like live on the internet. I do it 100%. This is a really horror story, but in the traditional sense, we didn't play one of my campaigns for nine weeks because of one guy's shitty scheduling. It was an important story session that I needed everyone in. Oh, that's crazy. You play with Colton too? I'm sorry, Colt. I'm sorry. I had to get I had to get one out. He's not that bad. He's not that bad. I have definitely had this happen before, not with, just with one person, but with multiple players who have had uh, scheduling conflicts that make it nearly impossible to play. I even had this issue when I was doing my patron game, which was uh, a little while ago, uh, uh, people were on a special tier of my Patreon where we would play in a weekly game and there'd be sometimes where they would miss and it's like, uh, you're like paying for this. Why are you not showing up? And it sucks because everybody else makes the time. They were literally paying for that slot, but also it just made me realize how valuable some people's time are. You know, this this was important to them and it's important to the rest of the group. And some, if you've got one person who can't make it constantly and you've got 
three, four, five other people who want to play and are making time to play, you should play without that person. Like I, I understand when there's important story sessions that you need everybody to be a part of, but at what point does it cost everybody else's playing just for that one person to be there, you know? Hey, I don't know your situation though. That just sounds like it sucks. I was here to read horror stories and I'm offering unsolicited advice. A friend of mine was going out of his way to screw the party over, claiming it was what his character would do. It went up to a point where I snapped and told him that this is a group game and he should go play Skyrim very loudly. The session ended. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. There was probably chaotic and disruptive and not the best way you could have handled it, but man, do I respect it. <laughs> I had a friend at the time, we were playing 3.5, and he wanted to be one of the prestige classes, which was an assassin, but like from level one, but he wanted to earn it, but he wanted to get it in a way to where the, the rest of the party didn't know that he had it. So he was like a secret character, which like, it was kind of cool, but I just did not have the DM ability to like make that interesting or secret or anything. It was just like a, I call it junkyard D&D, &D, but it, it, that's kind of what it was. We were just kind of playing and just like killing monsters and doing dungeons. It really didn't matter. It didn't have like a story or anything prepared. We were just like, blah, we have a three hour random period of time and we're all 18. Let's just play D&D. &D. And he uses one of his abilities called like a death strike or something. And I think he would be like, hey, I'm gonna use the thing. And I'm gonna be like, oh, okay, you have to roll this check and then they have to roll another check. It was very specific on how the ability worked, but we were trying to be vague about it. And then my friend Colton was like, oh, hey, you're an assassin? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, he is. I was just kind of tired of it at the point. He got so mad. He was like, you told me you would keep this a secret and he left, like he left my house. And I was just like, um, okay. <laughs> and and that was that was weird. I've never had a player leave the table before. Very strange. Go play Skyrim. <laughs> DM and co-DM had my non-horny bard framed for sexual assault without ever clearing such themes with players. Everyone was extremely uncomfortable. Uh, I, I hate this. Everybody was extremely uncomfortable with the game, soon fell apart when I left and everybody followed, which somehow made it my fault and I got paragraphs of verbal abuse? How is it your fault? That makes me so upset. I'm, just, God, you deserve better. <laughs> you didn't, I assume you didn't want that to happen. That's just, that's horrible. If there's ever a point in time where your DM ever does something in your game that makes you feel slightly uncomfortable, you need to immediately bring it up with them. A lot of DMs are in this position of power and they hold a little bit over every player because you don't know exactly what the dynamic is between all of them, especially if it's your group of friends or even if it's not a group of friends, you have no idea what the dynamic could look like, especially when they're being manipulative and they're also trying to do have sexual assault as a theme in their D&D game. That sounds fun. And if you're a dungeon master, you, you need to clear with your players on what their boundaries are, what everybody's cool with, however that looks. For some people, it's a, it's a, it's a checklist. It's a sheet. It's just easy to give to your players. And then for more myself, where I'm pretty good friends with all of my players, I just clear with them pretty early on, on what they're cool with, what they're not. And before we get into a game, I tend to ask them beforehand and, Typically, they tend to be more open to things like, hey, this character might die up in an upcoming game. Is that okay with you? And, oh no, I didn't get the shock value of killing that character out of nowhere, but it's kind of fun for them because they get to play into it a little more because they know it's going to happen. So it ends up being a little more dramatic and a little bit more fun. I'm just saying, communicating with your players not only makes the game fun for you, but it also makes the game more fun for your players. And it, God, this is disgusting. DMing for a group of new players, our sorcerer tried to use Fireball, didn't understand that it was an AOE spell, and hit the other three party members. Whatever they were fighting was immune to fire, so almost TPK their own party in session two. <laughs> Wait, did you, did you just let them do it? You were just like, I Fireball, and you're just like, okay, and it just happened? Or you were like, hey, you're a new player. You know that the way this spell works is like this. And just to let you know, just to give you a little bit of a thing, this 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 monster is immune to fire damage. So if you cast the spell, you're gonna hurt your party members and you're gonna do no damage to this guy. Cause this is a horror story. If they were like, yes, I understand that. 
fireball anyways. But it's the horror story on your part if you were just like, okay, it happens, you all die. Uh. The session after my OG character died, my new character was thrown into a bottomless pit along with the creature that was holding on to me? One guy at the table didn't like me and didn't even try to cut us apart before throwing me over. I laugh now, but annoyed at the time. He, my man's wanted you to be Gandalf. I always find it so funny when new DMs are just like, I'm just gonna run this movie. Look, as Dungeon Masters, we steal ideas all the time. Uh, that little idea, I'm gonna take that and put that in my D&D game. That's fine. But I've heard stories of like DMs who just straight up rip off entire plot lines of like whole games or movies. And they're just like, it's this, it's this now. And I'm gonna force this event that happens in the movie to happen, which is it's so funny. Town just barely survives being attacked by a mythical murder knight. Players manage to fend it off until it leaves. Many innocents dead or injured. Then one player decides to disguise self as that same knight and go, ooh, look at me, I'm the evil knight, ooh. <laughs> I really hate players like that. Needless to say, this was not in the mood of the scene for every other player nor the NPCs. Nothing became of it because I, the DM, didn't want to give them any satisfactory reaction out of it. Yeah, it's like, it's these, I hate players like this. It's like all they want is a reaction. Like the only thing they're doing is trying to like poke things to see if it'll happen. They're not engaging with the the party or the group or anything. They're just being an asshole for no reason at all. Oh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pretend to be the bad guy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the bad guy just to like see what the NPCs do and then like if they fight us then we'll just kill them you know and that's good on you Joe for not giving them a reaction they just want a reason it's stupid I don't know how it makes me feel that there are this many more that sucks well this was fun um I guess we'll just kind of sit in this cold reality at least a lot of these were from new players, right? That means, that means we, we can be better. We can get better. The problem people are the ones who learn and then continue. That's bad. It's, you know, you should strive to be a good player. You want everybody to have fun? Communicate. Read the room. Or, or just communicate with your players and your DM. That's, that's, that's a good way, it's a good way to start. It's a good way to start, start that kind of stuff. Oh. Make better choices. Happy Halloween.